Hi. Okay, my name is Choi Wen. We haven't introduced ourselves. <laughs> hi, my name is Choi Wen. Hello, my name is Zhang Xing. Okay, hi, hi guys. Hi. Grab your lunch and watch the show, which will be starting very, very soon. Yep. Do leave down your like your questions in the comment section. Hmm. Zhang Xing, have you seen an author in person before? Uh, yes, because I live near this Riverside Park, and there's authors here. Oh, so nice! I've never met an author like in person before. I mean, they look very cute, but I wouldn't know what to do when I see them in person. But I would like to still meet them in person one day. I think you'll be quite excited to see them. Uh huh. I yeah. think I'll be very excited too. Yeah. I think they look so cute. <laughs> <laughs> they will stop you from running or jogging. Hello, Danny. Hello, Nathan. Hi, hi. hi no, the authors will not appear on stream today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, let's start the show. Okay, hi everybody. Okay, we'll start the show now. Welcome to MSCV Talks, which is a series of live talks we've been holding just to chat with you guys, our audience, and also to talk about like the trending topics of the day. Yeah, so today is quite a special day because uh, it's the first time we're having like an afternoon live show. Um, tonight we'll be having a nighttime live show as well, uh, yeah. as per usual. Lah. Yeah, so today is a very special topic. We're yep. going to talk about authors, which is, uh, I guess, uh, Singapore's favourite animal in a way. Everybody, every Singaporean loves authors, right? They're so cute. We see them in parks and all. Um, but it's also very special because it's World Author Day today. Yes. Yay. <laughs> yes. So this is the day to celebrate authors. Mm -hmm. uh, I think outside of Singapore, like uh, the general population of authors, is declining if i'm not wrong later we can ask the expert so it's actually something special that uh, we have here in singapore as well, especially it's a very urbanized place yeah mm. and um, our authors have been in the news in the past few weeks they've been very active and busy they've mm. been like fighting and like visiting hospitals and eating koi fish yeah so uh, who are we speaking with today something yeah, so today we actually have a lecturer from NUS Biology Department. Um, he's also like a local wildlife expert. He's called Otterman because he has been studying otters since the 90s. So since, I don't know, since the period whereby we don't really spot otters around in Singapore, actually. So uh, let's welcome Siva. Woo! Okay, if you have questions for Siva, right, please leave it in the comments and we will ask him later. Okay, hi, Siva. Hi. Hi. Siva, I think you have to unmute your mic, Siva. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Siva. Hi. 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 Hello. Siva. Hi. Hi. Uh, Chiu Wei and Chang Xing. Thanks for joining us today. Happy to be here. Yeah, on World Author Day especially. Okay, so um, could you tell us or uh, share with us like a brief history of authors in Singapore first? Like, how did we get to have so many authors in Singapore? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, there's always people who have been interested in wildlife, but in the 70s, 80s, we were going through a lot of reclamation and all that, and uh, we actually saw a lot of things disappear. Uh, then there were reports of the odd author appearing, you know, in the 90s by members of the Nature Society, but they would come and then they go, they never stay. Then one day, you know, Sungai Bulo was so excited. They said, hey, we saw a pair. And then uh, shortly after that, the pair had pups. So this was the first time which uh, authors were resident in Singapore once again after a gap of uh, several decades. And when I was studying authors in the early 90s, I mean, I went to Malaysia and Indonesia. Lah. Um, okay, so we have authors at Bulo. I think we should put a statue somewhere in Sungai Bulo, commemorate the first time they came back, you know. And uh, then later on, we would get reports of them in uh, Pulau Tekong and Pulau Ubin and Lorong Halus and then eventually uh, Changi and East Coast. The East Coast Park video that somebody sent me like blew my mind. It's an author galloping on the sand and it's like, holy cow, East Coast Park, you know, it's the most visited beach. I couldn't imagine it. So they were slowly coming down. And then finally, 2014, uh, authors were in uh, Gardens by the Bay. Uh, there were reports of an individual all over Gardens by the Bay. So he went down to track it. He spent like half a morning. Uh, and then uh, we stood there 
and an otter came out of the reservoir, walked in front of my feet and looked at me. <laughs> and I'm a guy who tracked otters from a distance at night uh, without a torchlight uh, because they used to be so spooked in Malaysia, Indonesia. Our otters just walked right past my feet, looked at me, and then it went off. And then we followed it from a distance. Uh, uh, and then he went and called. So we knew that there was a female hiding. And the fact that the female wasn't coming out meant uh, that uh, she was probably pregnant. Oh. Uh, and then a park resident later sent us video where the male and the female were out and she was defecating and sprinting by the bay. Uh, then later on, they have pubs. La. Then Minister Kobunwa was like so excited. You know, Singapore in the 60s, he was like, oh my goodness. I was, in, I was from St. Andrew's School. Next to our school was Kalang River. And it was, the Potong Pasir residents call it the Dead Chicken River. Uh, but got bonus, you know, during flood, got dead pig or so. And then when our football bounces out of the field into that river, oh my goodness. It's so dark. And there's nothing alive. It's really a dead river. Now, if you go to that stretch, Kalang River, um, actually, otters had a big fight there. You know, it was amazing. It's clear water. It's really, I mean, uh, I'm really still very impressed by how we turned uh, waterways around. So with the clean water, then they spread lah. Mm. So mm. the minister announced it on Facebook that one got a lot, quite a lot of traction. And then we said, can you please say, uh, watch from a distance. And so that mantra, which uh, works with all wildlife, started lah. Mm. And then when they turn up at Bisham Park, we just kept the same message. Uh, so the MPAC people there took it up. And then we would go down and stand amongst the HCB dwellers who came out to see the otters. And then um, we'll just mention a couple of things. Then they realized, oh, these people seem to know something. Then they start coming and asking us questions, which was very interesting. Uh, one of which is where the otters come from. Same question asked me. Lah. So then we explain, you know, uh. from uh, all this while we said otters in Johor. And uh -huh. then um, Johor is also undergoing development now. La. So luckily, it's a time when Singapore's coastline like now stabilized. We have parks, greenways, connectors, the waterways is cleaner. So as the otters disperse um, or they venture forth, they found like, oh, okay, this place is not bad, la. Singapore. <laughs> uh, not just concrete and glass. Uh, so and they came right to our waterway. So... I got to say, la, those photos of the otters eating the fish with the background of Singapore City, that one blew everybody's mind. So that's why like people from all around the world are coming. Mm. So they are mostly from uh, Malaysia and they came the, over. Yes, so the original mm. population from the, the, the... So we call this the source and the sink. So we lost everything. Then happily, uh, Malaysia provided us uh, wild otters that ventured out. You know, the, the same thing happened with hornbills. Uh. Um, yeah, they, they also eventually came over and then now they the habitats are good, so they've managed to spread. So, you know, I saw, we see hornbill in NUS, then it's like, oh, I blow my mind. Uh, we used to cycle to Pulau Ubin and try and catch that one family that will fly to Ubin once in a while. Uh, and then now it's in uh, campus. Well, how many families are there and uh, what's your favourite family? Do you have a favourite? Of course, I can have a favourite. How can I have a favourite? This like, which child you really prefer? Uh, the, the, okay, the last time we did a census, which was by Chang Xin's junior, he worked very hard. Uh, I made sure that when you see an author in one place, you're not double counting. So he made sure that there were distinct counts. Um, and uh, in 2017, there were roughly about uh, 10 families, 80 otters. Lah. So uh, some of the families were large. Uh, now, uh, some of them are fragmented, so there may be more. Lah. But we're going to do a census again uh, with the otter watchers simultaneous across Singapore. It's going to be fun lah, when we can all come out after hopefully this circuit breaker finishes. Mm. Um, there are also some sentiments like they are considered too many nowadays. Like, what do you think about this? Whether, is this a real concern? So the, the reaction normally when you see a lot of photos or someone sends you a WhatsApp with uh, lots of videos and, you know, it can be quite startling. It's like, oh my God, when I go outside, I'm going to see Otter. But, but you, you see, um, uh, Shui Wen hasn't seen, right? Otter is yeah. not so easy, you know. If I ask you to go Marina Bay, go and look, ah. So one day I tried that without without checking my WhatsApp. Oh, I cannot, man. I cannot. <laughs> so the number of authors we have, say say we have about 100 now, uh, uh, even if we double it or triple it, uh, 
in the space of Singapore, uh, it's very few individuals. So um, the impression you get from social media can be not very accurate uh, because it, it helps to focus the information. So it's very helpful to me because we get reports from all over. Uh, but if you are not familiar and you're just seeing all these images and all that, you feel like, wow, they're overrunning all of Singapore. But uh, no, no, we don't have that many. So so why does it seem like there are so many authors? I think also because like, I guess people, they can't recognize like whether it's the same authors all the time or uh, different authors, right? So um, from what we heard, it's one same family that's been like touring around Singapore and appearing in different spots. So there's the impression that like they are everywhere, but it's actually oh, just the same. Oh, group. okay. So well, there's two things. Uh. Uh, in fact, Mothership did a video, right? The three yeah. uh, famous families within the central watershed. So this this term I'll use, central watershed, it comes from PUB, right? It's uh, what drains into the Marina Bay. So uh, you have Singapore River in the west, Kalang River in the east, if you go all the way down, it all meets at Marina Bay. If you go all the way to the top, it's Alexandra Canal and Botanic Gardens, right? And the other side, Bisha Amokyo Park and Lower Pier. So this this area has uh, four families now, right? So most of the, the photos you are seeing throughout the year would be of any one of these four families. So there's a photo from Singapore River or video from Singapore River. And then another one from Bishan Amokyo Park, another one from Marina Bay. Uh, and then Botanic Garden. So it, it really seems like there's a lot of authors. Mm. Um, but uh, recently during COVID, so the COVID-19 effect, right, which is the Botanic Gardens, the family in Botanic Gardens, Zook family, uh, when they when they raised the pups, they had six pups, you know, but only two survived. Lah. So uh, when their two were old enough, it's now time to go and look for a place to live permanently in their adult life that can support them with enough fish, mm. right? So, but when they go out, uh, what did they do? Oh, they met a met, uh, family at Singapore River. Uh, so, they had to back off. Uh, they had another encounter at Bishan Amon Park. It's like, oh my goodness, this is quite crowded. Can we look for another space? And that's so when then, they fight, right? Like, uh, Yeah, the, the, when they meet the family, uh, there's a fight. So, normally, um, if you look at the videos, uh, there's a lot of noise before the fight. So the families they met all so very, like very mal. Uh. So all like make a lot of noise. You know, it's like gang fight, you no know, bang bang table. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, gang fight. <laughs> uh, the actual physical contact uh, is, is not a lot. So uh, they could retreat uh, uninjured and uh, then live to look another day. Uh. So one fight at Singapore River, another fight at Bishan Munkil Park. Then the rest of the time now they're hunting. Okay, around their habitat, where can they go? Now, because of COVID, there's less uh, traffic, less people. So they get to wander and uh, in places where we normally wouldn't get them. Lah. So in a way, uh, the urban landscape has cleared up. Then the animals like, wow, so jadi, uh, got a place to go and hang out. Uh, and so that's uh, contributing to the many sightings that we are seeing. Lah. So besides fighting, are there like other uh, predators in Singapore? for otter? Uh, uh, not really, you know, it, otter is an apex predator. So if you protect an otter in its habitat, then all the other animals in the food chain can live. Lah. The, the equal of a top predator will be crocodile. So at Sungai Bulo, there's interaction between otters and crocodile. The otters are quite, you know, they are, they are more flexible, they are faster moving. So they go squeak, squeak. They're very uh, cautious with the crocodile, but they go and harass it. You know? Go and like build a tail and back away and all that. So what they're doing uh, is a crocodile will eat fish, like the otter eats fish. And then the crocodile is a threat, especially to pups. So when you see a competitor like that, then you will harass it. So it doesn't feel comfortable in the environment. The same thing happens with uh, these uh, dogs. Um, say from nearby farmland and then they come to the Bulo Kranji area <coughs> or like the Halus area. And you see there'll be a standoff with dogs. Dogs have the advantage on land. Otters have the advantage in the water. So the face-off is in the interface. Uh, 
<laughs> and then the otters will, you know, squeak, squeak. And um, uh, uh, people are normally quite concerned about the otters getting hurt because the dog uh, looks bigger, right? Yeah. But when they're in the water, the dogs uh, don't really have a chance. Uh. This was actually filmed in a Nat Geo video by Claire Clement, uh, who works here. So it's quite exciting. Uh. But in Pasiris, one of the dogs actually got bitten by otter. I think wow. the dog not very experienced, so it went in the water with the otter. So <laughs> I, I, I think it was not go in the water. Yeah, they, Entered so the wrong one, arena. <laughs> yeah, went to the habitat where they don't... Mm. The dog is a runner, you see, then the otter is a swimmer. So there was mm. one day, a video came to me uh, in the, the state land around uh, Marina Bay, and there was a dog being chased by otter, so the person was very concerned. Hey, will the otter hurt the dog? I said, my God, hey, those short legs. Hey, gallop, gallop, gallop. Then the dog is quite timid. La. So it just took a few steps and then it's so far away and then the otter still chase, chase. Uh, quite a waste of time. La. It's quite but, a cute scene. I can like, imagine it in my head. Quite, yeah, yeah, quite a cute scene. The dog was afraid, although they were far away. So it just galloped a bit and then otters can't chase. Now, the biggest threat to the otters is probably from another family of otters. Because oh. there's limited space, they want to fight for it. Because if I have the space, then I can hunt the fish mm. inside and can survive, can raise pup. So if another family comes, that's why you know they go and defecate on land. They poo poo on land, right? Then mm -hmm. uh, there's a chemical smell, you know. Like so the otters can pick it up. Yeah, it's like exactly like marking territory, you know, cats and dogs do it as well. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, if another family wants to try and take over, then there'll be a fight. So Typically for these fights, the first is you're full of noise. La. You why, know, are, make, why do they squeak so much? Is there a reason okay, like to scare the enemy? One is they're communicating and they're coordinating. The second one is to scare the, the enemy, right? So, in, in, you know, when you are afraid, uh -huh. see, you see an enemy go afraid, you try and make yourself look bigger, right? So whether you're an insect or a mammal, it's the same thing. I look bigger and I look dangerous. Then uh, can settle the fight already. Uh, no need to come to blows. Uh. Yeah, so they will make a lot of noise and then uh, the, they will decide, oh, this one sounds very strong. Okay, let me back, back off. If that doesn't work, then they can come to blows. But when they come to blows, right, there's a lot of biting going on. Um, uh, so far in the fight, the victim is always one of the, the youngest and the slowest uh, pup. Youngest and slowest will be the pups, right? So uh, there have been a few incidents in which one pup got killed. At the point at which one part got killed, the fight settled. Mm. Yeah, the auto watchers have a video, no, which they sent, which was the part getting that final bite to the base of the neck, and then it, it sinks out of sight. So I didn't watch the video, but my oh. friends went and then they all couldn't sleep at night. Wow, sounds very dramatic. It is like it is. This is actually how I mean wildlife has to survive. Mm. Uh, in our forests, uh, also in our urban spaces. It happens uh, with birds, uh, small mammals, uh, insects, uh, all the time. Uh. So this is how they, they work, work out uh, who's fit enough to be able to survive. Mm. So for, for the families, right? Uh, I do notice that it seems like the Marina family is always the one that got chased around or like didn't seem to have an uh, advantage it, during the fights between Zook and, and Bishan. Do they all have different personality? Or are the marina like slightly more tame and like, I don't know, kind? You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like not so... Not uh, chill, uh, don't want to fight. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. So definitely uh, personality has a, has a role. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. Okay, so maybe cats in your neighbourhood. Uh, some cats are shy, some are friendly, some are indifferent. So the shy cat you don't see, la, the shy cat watches you. Mm. The indifferent cat, you know, look at you and then doesn't bother. The friendly cat can come towards you, right? So uh, when cats meet each other, um, the more robust cat will be able to take charge. Huh? Mm. So between the otter family, so let's just talk about uh, Marina and uh, Bishan. This one, long saga, you know, because... Um, like Chang Sin knows, I think, because um, Bishan were <coughs> raised their pups in Bishan, right? Then down river, Bishan, uh, Bishan Amon Kyo Park is like botanic gardens. It's ideal as a nursery site, you know, you raise young pups, teach them how to swim, catch small fish. Then when they grow up, they have to go to a proper territory. So when Bishan went down uh, Kalam River, 
uh, Claire Clemens was around, you know, she was filming the documentary Mika, and then she said, I think they met Marina, and then she didn't see the meeting, but she saw Bishan fleeing. Then uh, later on, when Bishan went down, this is after the dad, son of Otto Watcher said, oh, the dad was play fighting a lot with the pups, you know. So, okay, I got training already. Yeah. When they went down, there was a major standoff. And uh, Chang Kit Soon, uh, he's known as Fast Neil. He used to upload a lot of videos. He was there because, you know, they follow it all the time. Uh. And they saw the standoff, you know, between between uh, Bishan and Marina. And I think Nat Geo bought the footage. So it's in that uh, documentary. And uh, we realized then that Bishan is very coordinated. They never lose their structure. But Marina got split. And got split into two groups. So now what was more or less an even match, you know, Bishan 5 versus Marina 6, got split into two groups. And the Bishan went and chased one of the smaller groups. And that's when uh, SAJC, St. Andrews Junior College, is located on the Kalang River, right? The students saw otters crossing the campus. They said, oh, very cute. Actually, the Bishan was like, where's Marina? <laughs> you are going to teach them, teach them a lesson. So um, like they all went back gang to fight going on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, watching them. <laughs> And then after that, they went down, they took over the Marina's territory. Lah. So what what we've seen, what the auto watchers have recorded has been this superior mm. uh, territorial capability. And we realized it had a lot to do with the dad and the mum. Mm. These are like amazing parents. Lah. So if you go to like auto watch on Facebook page, lah, we still have the commemoration when Bishan dad died. You know when Bishan dad died, right? We were like, this is such a magnificent creature. Have we all lived our lives in a similar way? And the Bishan dad, uh, he crawled into the hole, right? The family had to leave to eat. And then he crawled out so the auto watchers at a distance were able to see, you know. And they saw as he took his last breath. And then when they saw, uh, uh, you know, a fly finally come, uh, then they said, okay, this one is confirmed pass away. So it was a very, uh, very impactful uh, mm. time because the Bishan dad had taught all the auto watchers and the scientists and the managers that uh, what it was like to be an otter, what it was like to be a wild animal, to secure territory, look after your pups and all that. So, wow, very impactful. Uh, that. <laughs> uh, and of course, the mum as well, we saw, we realised more of what she'd been doing when the dad passed. And so, the, the Bishan family has had a big advantage in the Singapore uh, Central Watershed. Okay. Um, so, Siva, we actually had like some people on IG ask us questions uh, regarding authors, which we would like yep. to ask you now. So, um, I think one of the more common questions are, um, can we keep authors as pets? I think maybe because like, we see, oh, so cute. Like, is there a way I can keep them, I don't know, in my house, close to me? Yeah, so a few people asked us, like, can authors be kept as pets? Okay, so uh, it's illegal uh, because of the law, uh, and thankfully so lah. So you wanna you wanna keep otter as pet, you must be twenty four seven with the animal. No? Uh, they are highly social, so you can't like go to work. Already a dog already like quite dejected if you leave it lah. So <laughs> what animal like forget it man. And then the 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 if you really care about the animal, it needs to be able to express its biology, which means it must be in very close and intimate connection with the family group. So this cute factor this cute is factor quite scary. Uh, in Japan, right, they Japan, used to have pet right. cafes and then they um, started adding wildlife, you know, so there's owls, so there's otters, and uh, people go and see how they're living in this airy place. It's like just really cruel. Like just really so now, so now uh, CITES uh, law has changed. Uh, we got upgraded, so the export from Indonesia to Japan uh, will have to stop. The Japanese author people are trying to explain to people at zoos and all that uh, why you don't keep wildlife as pets. Mm, mm. So, yeah, it's a terrible idea uh, <laughs> to confine an animal. Look at all of us, we like COVID stay at home, like all, all struggling. Cannot take it already. No, yeah. I need to go and get my bubble tea. Can, can you <laughs> imagine to a wild animal? If you follow the author family, they take. They, they, they travel over quite uh, yeah. long distances in a day, you know. Mm. And in fact, there's once uh, we were following from uh, Kalam Basin, right? Uh, Kalam Wave Mall. Uh, and uh, then they started moving and then we started to follow on foot. Then, ah, uh, too fast, you know, they're swimming. So, do you know, I took MRT, you know. Uh, I took MRT from Kalang <laughs> to Esplanade, you know. Then I pop out and then I went to go look for them. So, <laughs> you, you want to put them in your house? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Okay, so everybody, you have to answer to that question. It is illegal and you do not want to do that to 
the author that you it's like so much. Kuro. Yes, it's Kuro. But okay, I, I the... got to say, right, <laughs> they, they, I can understand why they will ask this question. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely yeah. want to talk. It's yeah, because like of my, my rabbit, my hamster, so cute. I want yeah, to have it yeah. as a pet. So, yeah. so I guess the equivalent is like, if you have a dog, you, you got to walk the dog. The dog is a runner, you know. Uh, most of the breeds, lah, right? So you, you, my friends who keep dogs suddenly, wow, they, they're getting fit because they have to go up. Um, there was a cat in Delta Avenue that my student followed. And this was a sterilized cat. Lah. That means the need to wonder is not as strong as the unsterilized cats, right? Most cats in Singapore are sterilized already. Lah. This sterilized cat walked the entire, pe- entire perimeter of multiple blocks. So really, uh, you want to keep cat also, please make sure it's sterilized. Lah. The, uh, the the cat is not as domesticated as a dog, right? So mm. it needs the space. Uh. And mm. then, uh, um, like cat, you know, you can... Uh, cat sometimes will say, okay, leave me alone. No need to pet me so much. But otters, have you seen them in a while or seen videos? They're no. so inter- they are not interacting. In the <laughs> yeah, but you've seen videos, right? Mm, you can yeah. see how connected a family is, you know. Uh, we all, all can't maintain that kind of connectivity, right? Especially urban citizens and all that. We barely know our neighbours. So, like, yeah, we can't provide the right environment for them. Mm. Okay. Uh, the next question is, I wonder why people ask this question, but are they really fighting in the viral videos? So, I mean, like, videos of authors fighting uh, tend to go viral very often, uh, especially because it's such a... I, like quite a majestic scene ah. like they like swimming sort of like surfing on the surface of the water and they kind of clash it's like very dramatic and very like I guess for, don't need to tell me it fascinates scientists too because yeah, yeah. normally all these are they really fighting place where we can't see right mm. yeah so in fact we actually study these kind of videos and you, you can see how much is gesturing so Wild animal a fight is very damaging, you know. So if you're in the wild, right, and you get injured, it, it can mean your demise. Right now, there's a injured author out there, which uh, people in the vicinity are sending reports. We're trying to figure out uh, what, how is it doing, uh. but uh, not very good prognosis if you're injured in the wild. So usually there's a lot of gesturing initially, uh, and uh, they don't really like fight to the death. They they fight to establish like which one is stronger. Uh, it's 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 a, about communication uh, so that uh, fight to the death is not necessary la. but yeah they are fighting uh, so um, you know sometimes you know game fight and they throw table throw chair and all that that's all that's the part and then, but then it can escalate la. so usually one side will say okay, let me run away I run away la. then the other side will say okay, then they won't chase forever up to some point and they let me go so uh, like in, in for urban Singaporeans, we don't see a lot of those. So when I was young, growing up, uh, there were a lot more dogs uh, in the neighborhood, like, as well as in the neighborhood. So there were um, uh, people's dogs, then the fans sometimes will get. You know. Then there are also stray dogs that roam the neighborhood. I guess some people maybe are feeding or something. So as a small kid, right, we'll wander all over the neighborhood, we had to know how to handle ourselves. So if a dog comes out and is barking fiercely or a pack of dogs and all that, uh, we know how to uh, manage ourselves. We don't run. Uh, we face them off. So the dog's trying to figure out, hey, he's staring me down. Uh, maybe, uh, oh, but then don't stare too hard. Because uh, don't don't overdo the challenge. So just like, I'm not afraid of you. And then eventually you back off. And then there's a certain distance, they won't chase you anyway anymore. For, so for yeah. otters, right, how do we know that we are standing too close to them? Okay, for otters, usually they just ignore us. Uh, we are not part of the equation. A dog is domestic, it's, it, it, it's commensal with men, so we are part of the equation. Uh, but for uh, otters, we are like the tree or the bench or the park, right? <laughs> so the, the, when we first said uh, watch from a distance, we were more trying to protect the otter. Lah. Because uh, when they first appeared in Gardens by the Bay, everyone was rushing towards them with the handphone. And uh, they are looking at the handphone screen. So they get closer and closer. And the author had to keep giving up space. So when your, when your daily life has a lot of stress, it will affect your health. So then we said watch from a distance. But we had to figure out how does it help you, right? I want to know how does it help me, right? Um, and, and we say if you watch from a distance, you can watch them longer. So people kind of figure out. Um, mostly I think they did want to not disturb the animal then for the minority that just want to get their photo right they also realize oh, okay uh, Gideon's space I can see more um, 
and and generally, I would say Singaporeans have been delightfully uh, supportive of that concept. In Bishan Amokyo Park, you know, in the early days and all that, some people went too close and all that, and other people say, hey, must uh, give them distance. Now, um, when authors have pubs, and if they are no longer wary of people, so that means um, at Singapore River, you know, the area is very small. So when people crowd them, they actually got no choice. So Marina family actually had to learn how to be a bit more tolerant of people. Lah. So yeah. we also did auto watch. We went down and we try and explain to people and all that. But we also know Marina got to deal with this, lah, right? But when there are pubs, uh, then the parents will have to protect. So there are people who have no concept of distance and then they get really close. So even when the author watchers warn them, they say, ah, yeah, please, lah, I've seen the authors every day, you know, always jog through this area. And then the parents go and nip them. Uh, so it's a nip, it's not a bite. Lah. So there's a warning, okay, you, you cross your line. So animals are wildlife, right, in our interactions. There's a lot of warning, mm. right? So that's gesturing. So the behavior normally, uh, people not so sensitive to it because... Uh, they can't, uh, they're not familiar and they don't, don't grow up with dogs or, you know, chickens or whatever, right? So they are not so sensitive to the messaging. I was in a national park in Sarawak and I was there for many days and then the weekend, the day trippers came, right? And they've been very close to some of the leaf monkeys that were there. Even when the leaf monkey was uh, giving out the vocalization to warn them off. This normally is the alpha male who has to protect la. then he's right. warning 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 yeah then they didn't realize so we had to explain he said hey he's telling you to back off so in general i guess we just need to take note uh especially when we are too engrossed in taking photos like you know we have to keep that distance maintain that as well as especially that when there's like small pups right and then the mother will tend to get a bit more protective um so for how about siva uh there are some comments or some people suggest cowling like when it comes to, let's say, uh, overpopulation or when there's too many uh, authors, what do you think about this? So I'm quite surprised that, well, I shouldn't be surprised, but, you know, it's a it's a reaction that people say, okay, uh, they think maybe quite two-dimensionally, like, oh, there's too many authors. First of all, that you know, we've dismantled that suggestion. Uh, then if there's too many or something, okay, we kill. So I think they just haven't thought through the kind of issue. Lah. So um, for, for animals that start to interfere with people, typically is animals that are fed. So long term a cat, uh, wild pigs, uh, these are examples of animals that if you feed, uh, or even crows and miners, right? So uh, I guess maybe because we dealt with crows, uh, miners all that in the past, pigeons and all that, we culling. Uh, now there's mm. a big turnaround. Uh, we realize, mm. okay, what is the source of the problem? Uh, at one point of time, we were killing ten to 16,000 stray cats per year in Singapore, no? So AVA, uh, at the time it was AVA, right, the Animal Welfare uh, Division put together a data and they realized this obviously is not working. So then they in introduced this stray cat rehabilitation scheme. So with, with, with cats, community cats is uh, trap, neuter, release, manage. Uh, same for dogs. Uh, then the, the, the reason why there's a manage is actually the, the feeders or the carers. Uh, look after their health and all that kind of thing. So then a certain number within an area and then uh, no new individuals will come in. Uh. So that's uh, turned out to be a very good way to manage uh, cats and dogs in urban areas. Then for uh, crows, you know, at one time we had 120, 130,000 crows. Uh, it got reduced to about 10%. Uh, there was shooting from the beginning, but the shooting couldn't deal with it. So uh, NEA at the time introduced an integrated campaign after a lot of research was done. And it was really interesting because uh, most of the changes had to be done by people themselves. We so, cleaned up. So if you eat at a canteen, uh, go and return your tray. Mm. And then they had cleaners to make sure the food wasn't around. So in NUS, uh, in like four months, we turned it around. From crows sitting at the next table waiting for me to finish my food. And crows quite big. Uh. Can mm. you imagine the next canteen yes. table looking at you? And they're very intelligent. Uh. Uh, within several months of putting the keep our tray clean, um, and looking after the bin setters, uh, the population just reduced because they, there's no food. So now people barely see crows, right? It's down to like 10,000, mostly in the coastal areas. Mm. So the concept so, of using fear doesn't actually work, right? What fear? Like uh, shooting or like shouting them uh, away or or even cowling. Like, okay, all these happy. things are with... Okay, so culling, we realise, okay, first of all, society doesn't really support it. Lah. When we do surveys for long-term macaques, civets and all that, they say about 5% will say kill. 
then the rest is like what other options are there okay so then with integrated management we try to reduce the factors that lead to uh, them causing uh, conflict with people uh. in the case of many animals where people are feeding that's the first thing to stop now you can't just use education uh, you got to have law to support it so the wildlife law just got changed and that's going to be helpful uh, then um, but also uh, AVS goes down and explain to people uh, and teach them the whole loop what is happening and then uh, people understand and they're able to adjust. So that's very important. The other thing is uh, habitat. So for civets, sometimes they go into roofs or houses. Then some people are scared or whatever. We can go down and explain or acres or parks or we go down and explain. Uh, some of them accept it. Some of them say, no, 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 I want them out of the house. So when the civets wander out at night, you can seal the roof. Mm. Then they have to go find some other place. Uh, so for otters, the main reason why people are some people are getting excited is just because they're eating koi. Yeah. Most, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't think they're that as upset about the other issues like they're crossing roads and all that. I think they know circuit breaker roads are not so crowded. Lah. So if they're eating koi, then uh, simplest way is you put in fix your fencing. So the people who own ponds, uh, previously there's no otter, right? So they don't need to account for it. Uh, now that there's otter, if there's otter in your neighborhood, then yeah, uh, take a look at the fence from the perspective of otter, uh, see how you can fix it. So they are fenced with gaps of say four inches, quite wide. Lah. Then they had otter in the neighborhood, so then they put in the, you know, the green uh, fencing with holes, right? They just put it in the background uh, and that sealed the gap and it solved the problem. Lah. And right. we solved the problem in several other areas as well. So, so that's probably what the people living in or near Botanic Garden should uh, keep a lookout for if, let's say, they have koi ponds or fish ponds, right? Like, they should start to think about fencing it up? No, I mean, people normally have fences. So, normally, it's oh. just the gaps. Okay. Yeah, right? So, for okay. example, if you have a side drain that goes out, previously, you don't need to put any fencing there, lah, you know? It's just a drain, right? Water goes out. But if the otter can get back in, then you got to put your gaps on. Okay. Oh, okay. There's a very cute question uh, that we have from... Uh, our Facebook audience uh, Mindy asked like have you seen or do our authors actually swim on their backs and hold their their hands or like their claws together oh okay okay <laughs> so I think that one is due to the immense popularity of sea authors sea also, authors, are, sea um, authors not yeah. the authors yeah so yeah. no not real, river authors la. so sea authors do this you know they, they're actually permanently out at sea uh, so they float on their backs that's very uh, efficient you know, it doesn't require effort and yeah. their fur helps them oh, like yeah. this. and then the, the holding of the hand is so that the flotilla of many otters right they, they it allows them to stay together mm. yeah so no the, the river otters uh, don't do that they, they might uh, sleep on their back right we've had right you see a lot of photos you know they're lying down on the back and all that but uh, no they're not doing backstroke in our canals <laughs> so, yeah, so for how about them like uh, wiggling around or like on, on sandy areas, like you know, they turn themselves into mochi like that. What are they actually doing? Oh, okay, they are drying themselves. It's a very, very important thing that they have to do because the otters are actually like us, you know, you know they, they, they can get cold, but they got this long fur, right? But the fur normally is full of air. So when they first go into the water, there's an insulating effect of air. So sometimes when they're streaming through the water, you see these bubbles and all that coming out. Now, every now and then, they need to go and dry out the fur. So when they come mm. on to land, then they dry their fur. Uh, that's actually very, very important for them. Then along the way, they also sprain, uh, they defecate, urinate. That one has a chemical signal which they use to advertise their presence. So a uh, long time ago in the 70s, the chair of the author specialist group, Nicole Duplé, she did some work in zoos and she found out some zoos actually didn't give enough dry land in the author enclosure and the author's health was uh, very poor. So it's quite important that they have surrounding mm. uh, land. So in Bishan Amokyo Park, right, wow, that one is Nirvana uh, <laughs> for a canal. It was a canal, you know, it got transformed. So this looks like a more natural river. It can cope with the flooding. I hope we can see more of that in Singapore in future because the, the normal vertical wall canal is like a death trap la, for a lot of animals. So as we uh, evolve in our landscape, uh, that can be quite helpful. So when I was watching, I was following a family when they first brought their pups down to Marina Bay from Singapore River. And as they're swimming down, right, 
they had to dry their fur, right? So they climbed up the steps in front in front of Asian Civilizations Museum. The entire place is like concrete. The only bit of like uh, natural soil was around a tree, just a small half meter square. And they went and tried to squeeze out the water on the tree. La. So yeah, it's uh, quite tough. Mm. So very important to have adjacent land to the waterway where they can dry themselves off. And then for us, it's great, right? You just sit down there and then you can watch them. Uh, you know, there's a video that uh, had more than a million views. La. It was taken by Jeff Tan and it was gardened by the Bay East. So, you know, Park started mulching the trees. They put all these uh, soil and uh, wood mixture around the trees. So the otters loved the mulch. So they all went, oh, there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, and then he added music and then I play it when I go and give talks in school. So it's lovely. <laughs> so, I mean, for me, right, I am, I guess I'm not like a nature enthusiast or I don't go out to like look for authors just to, like follow authors to see them. I'm just like a regular yeah. person. Um, so what should I do when I come across or encounter an author? If I'm lucky enough, I'm at the park or I'm at the beach. Uh, mm. and I see maybe like an author family or I see authors fighting like what should I do or what should I not do uh, just watch from a distance mm. yeah. just watch yeah there's no need to do anything right yeah <laughs> what's the why one mistake so, that... why are you so kanchong must do something <laughs> I don't know just, I just think watch. if there's something happening in front of you maybe like oh should I call like acres oh, I do see. I have to do something yeah, and what's the one mistake then that people make when they come across authors like at parks or beaches or waterways? Just sometimes they go too close. Mm. So the 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 okay, if you if uh sometimes people are just running, so they might just stop for a while. But if you wanna spend some time watching them and if they're moving around, just try not to get in their way. Lah. And it's quite interesting because some people like follow their feet trying to uh, you know, keep out the authors and not get in the way. But after some time, they'll figure it out. Lah. So the the giving them space to do their own thing. And you asked earlier, right? How do you know you're too close? Huh? That's when they have to look at you. So if they're doing the thing, but they have to look at you, means <laughs> you are interfering already. So if you so, think you're having an intimate moment with an author, you're actually not having an intimate moment with No, the author. authors are trying to do author things. Lah. They, they, <laughs> they would like not to have to look out for you because then it simply means there's more stress in the environment. Mm. So um, some of my students, you know, they studied pigeons uh, near a walkway with people and further away from the walkway. And the pigeons which were further away were more relaxed. They didn't have to look up and check on their surroundings so much. And they had more time to maintain their feathers and which is very important for flight. Mm. So uh, definitely we, uh, when we are too close, we disturb uh, any animal. Uh, mm. Some are more habituated than others. La. So uh, we are quite lucky because our authors are not so scared. Um, but yeah, don't go too close. Just give mm. them space. If you think there's a major crisis happening, uh, yes, always just call MPARCs or ACRES. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, another sentiment that we picked up from uh, the internet uh, the past week or so is this, other than the fact that like, uh, or people thinking that maybe the other population is um, really growing rapidly and they could potentially become pests. This other sentiment is uh, about how uh, otters don't belong in urban environments. Is this true? I think if you are thinking of a dystopian uh, <laughs> setting, mm. you know, Back to the Future, I think the second or the third movie, like, it's, it's quite scary, right? It's all... Uh, electric signs and it's usually very dark because the buildings have covered the skylight a um, lot of use of underground space oh thanks no thanks for that world and cities are not so dumb la. they're not just going to degenerate so they're working very hard to have this concept of livable cities mm. in livable cities Singapore is you know is well known for it because we started greening and bluing uh, from independence and then later we realized um, uh, we can actually uh, project um, um, biodiversity in the city. Uh, how do we achieve it? What do we do? And so there's a, a biodiversity, city biodiversity index uh, at the United Nations level 
uh, which uh, Singapore promoted and some countries are adopting. I've met planners who say, oh, that's a wonderful plan. Of course, you know, I'm, I'm Singaporean, so you know, they will credit me. I had nothing to do with it. But uh, they say, there's a wonderful plan you have in the city. And, and then we have a chat. Lah, and then they, when they're trying to adjust from the current state of development towards the city with biodiversity, it's, it's a lot of effort. So we are really lucky that we had this greening idea. Lah. And mm. the greening idea is not static. Lah. It keeps changing. So we went from just green uh, then to let's have native biodiversity uh, and then now there's going to be this uh, city in nature objective mm. right? Uh, and it includes planting like a million trees or a million plants uh, even in your neighbourhood uh, how can you enhance it so um, definitely, definitely there's space room. For, mm. for nature no in fact we need it mm. because it affects our mental health uh, most people want to stay near a nature park Mm. So they might not be like, you know, like you say, like not so hardcore, like, go and follow the author and all that. Mm. They like the idea of that there's wildlife in the city. They mm. hope to see they, they hope to see something and they take a walk. Uh, so they also support this idea that we need a softer landscape. You know, in NUS, right, I, I, I teach students and all that. So over, over the decades, I've seen the changes. Uh, our students are more like nature deficit, uh, highly urbanized. Uh, it's actually quite stressful for them, I feel. Uh, and they come to a campus which is now much more congested, you know. I brought my classmates from 30 years ago, they came back. The first remark is, wow, so congested. We use every square inch. So it's very important how we, uh, and we have a natural affinity for nature. So how do you integrate that into the landscape? And there's been a lot of, you know, there's green wall and green roof and having potted plants around you and uh, having a grass connectivity, you know, a green area connectivity. Uh, that links through the campus. So, for example, we saw, um, you know, they are, they are flying lizards, you know, they spread their ribs yeah. and they can climb, mm. right? I saw that next to University Hall. It's like crazy, you know. And then mm. I told you about hornbills in campus and then the straw header boo-boo. It's a rare bird that almost disappeared in Southeast Asia because of the songbird trade, right? It's, it's tragic. In Singapore, it's calling in campus. So, that completely changes... Um, uh, how we feel about the space we are in and it's a very important thing to do. There's already uh, plenty of research that talks about benefits um, in recovery in hospitals and all that. So NUH, which is quite uh, quite urbanized under uh, building structure, um, actually if you go inside, when you're inside the wards and all that, they have little corners that let in sunlight and there's plants. So it's uh, very important that we welcome nature to the city. So for authors, where, where is the best spot and when is the best time to see them if anyone wants to like catch a sight of them? Ob oh, observe them from afar. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Observe so from like afar. If I want okay, to observe go, from yeah. afar. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you need to take her, right? So uh, I would say the the city, we have these four families. So Bishan Amunkyo Park, Singapore River, uh, Marina Bay and Botanic Gardens. But it's, it's not a guarantee you'll see here. Uh. Right? Okay. Now, uh, when to see? Uh, early morning and late afternoon. Mm. Okay. Uh, so, Bishan Amokyo Park, Singapore River, Botanic Gardens and what was the last one again? Marina Bay. Marina Bay. Okay. Yeah. I will keep a lookout. I'm really interested to observe them from afar. Okay, one thing one thing you can do is if there are reports of authors in an area the previous day, so afternoon, uh, they are seen at Botanic Gardens, then the next morning you go to Botanic Gardens, your chances of seeing them is higher. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Because, okay. Uh, okay, authors are uh, diurnal, that means they wake up in the day, go about their business. So, you know, I always get my students to try and think about it. Okay, you wake up in the morning, you brush your teeth, go to the toilet, take breakfast. Okay, author the same thing. Uh. Monkey also the same thing. Right, so but uh, we all start in the day, right? So peak period of activity is the early morning. Uh, mm. By ten o'clock, um, the a lot of the activity will dissipate. So it's perfect, you know. You wake up early in the morning, you go out look for authors, then you can go makan with your friends. It's yeah. perfect. Perfect. Then perfect usually activity. midday, yeah, yeah, it's a perfect activity. And then in Singapore, you know, so many good places to eat, right? So you can just uh, arrange it. When we bring international visitors. Uh, we're so happy when uh, so if they turn out at Gardens by the Bay we do this loop then we end up Sati by the Bay la. Uh, uh, or Zion Road behind there's a hawker centre and mm. yeah there are plenty of places la. my friends know better than me and <laughs> then usually midday not so active 
and then they will get active uh, late late afternoon before mm. they finally go to sleep lah. So that's mm. why when we have a delegation lah, like youth leaders from Asia had a meeting in Singapore, I asked the auto watchers, "Hey, can take them to go see doctors lah?" <laughs> oh, auto watchers work very hard you know, for three days. They were tracking. They figure out which family is where and all that kind of thing. So uh-huh. that morning, right, what well, range of bars went down. Uh, they were able to see, and of course, uh-huh. all of them are filled with delight. So mm. actually, uh, not so easy to see, but you got to put in some effort, lah. So if you really like encounter them when you're out for a run or walk, yeah. or just randomly, it means you're very very lucky. Yes, very lucky. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So so my <laughs> friends are sharing photos of otters or uh-huh. uh, hornbills uh-huh. or herons, uh, even water hen. You know, they just it's a great delight to see a wild creature out there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so, but, I mean, just a quick reminder, we are still in CB period, so, <laughs> everyone, yeah, I guess you live nearby this area, but probably you have to wait until CB is lifted, or when we can go further uh, out. Yeah, you want you to go and explore, yeah, you want to go to Black explore, yeah. Marina Bay, is post circuit breaker, uh, yes. but now you can explore your neighbourhood, and many neighbourhoods, there's uh, wildlife nearby. Mm. Yeah, but if you want to see otter specifically, um, you can go to Auto Watch and look at some photos first for now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or watch a video. Or you look up yeah. uh, Fast Nail on YouTube. Okay. He documented a lot of behavior extensively. Actually, mm. you know, it's a international repository for otter behavior, smooth coated otter behavior. So people, when, when I wanted to do smooth coated otters, I couldn't see them, right? I went to Zoo Nagara, which happened to have a few individuals and I sat there for two days to watch the otters so that in my head there's the image you know so when I'm in the forest and I see a slight shape I can catch all of it right now we have a YouTube uh, repository of uh, wonderful otter behaviour mm. thanks for joining us today Siva okay so I think we learned quite a lot today but the main main takeaway I think for uh, our audience is really if you spot a, an otter when you're out taking a walk in nature meaning like you didn't intentionally go and look for an otter, it means you're very lucky. And the second thing is observe from afar always. Yes. Just let them do their own thing and observe from afar. If they look at you, you're too near, right? <laughs> okay. Um, Siva, do you have any like last words for our audience um, regarding, I don't know, nature or just uh, anything in general regarding this period? Coexisting with animals. Yeah, coexisting with animals especially, yeah. Okay, so I would say that, um, you know, when, when I grew up, uh, I saw a lot of nature disappear. La. It's actually quite uh, depressing. Uh, then there was a lot of effort to try and do recovery. So, you know, we have buffer parks, there's replanting, there's um, all these efforts, right? It's really a wonderful time to be in Singapore and to appreciate wildlife. But uh, having said that, we, we, we do have to make adjustments, right? So there are working groups for most of your wildlife. There's a, there's a working group for, for wild pigs, for civets, for pythons, for uh, otters, for marine turtles. And this, uh, this uses the expertise of people from ACUS, who is a wildlife rescue charity, right? And then uh, MPARCS, which is the government agency, uh, wildlife Reserve Singapore, which has a lot of very experienced vets, um, and um, new agencies, so like PUB got involved because you know otters are in the water. Mm. Uh, PA Water Venture is doing a great job with. They're they're really cute, you know, because you wanna you talk about education. I'm quite boring lah, but wow, they all will dress a guy in a huge otter suit, uh, <laughs> around a carnival. Then they <laughs> their people are dying for their otter toys and all that. Uh, so they do a really great job. So every partner has a skill set. And when they come together, uh, we work very well. And what's very interesting is for, for authors, we have a very strong um, citizen scientist group, right? Uh, these, these photographer naturalists, uh, you can see them in Author City and all that. Uh, and that's growing uh, for the other group. So like long tail macaque, we've had to have human conflict issues for the longest time. It comes down to not feeding. Um, if people are fed and we need to try and ameliorate the situation, the working group actually tries to help. Mm. educate the people there's even a monkey herding project which turned out quite well you know uh, mm. so there are people working hard uh, not just to ensure that nature comes back to the city but how to help a uh, public cope because mm. we all appreciate you know we grew up in quite urbanized environment mm. we're having to learn new skill sets mm. the wonderful thing is singaporeans love it so love they are really encouraged yeah they re- really encouraged uh, by their attitude 
uh, and then we got to help them mm. uh, learn some things. And it's quite fun, right? Uh, <laughs> learning about all these yeah. things. And we now see a generation of youth uh, who are coming up and getting involved. Mm. So uh, that's very exciting. Yeah. That's great. Okay, thank you so much for joining us, Siva. Hello, uh, you're welcome. Thank Thanks you. Very much. <laughs> okay, thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye bye. Okay. Wow, that was a very informative uh, interview talk with Siva. I think at some points I kind of got lost, but um, I think the main messages I got were Singaporeans love nature. Mm -hmm. nature can coexist with us and the main thing is let the animals do their thing and observe them from afar yeah from yeah. i mean learning from siva is never either or kind of thing or like mm -hmm. urban or like wow kind of thing we can kind of like incorporate together as a livable city yeah. as a concept that's pretty cool mm -hmm. um so and it's not a question about whether authors belong in urban environments but whether or not we can coexist with them in a livable space because we also need nature right i mean mm. humans need nature yeah yeah i think during the cv period especially for me i feel that it's like really important for me to just be able to look out to mm. something that's like not walls not laptop not yeah. green right <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think that's what like siva means that when when like uh how people or human beings actually like is part of nature Mm. Yeah, and I think I learned a lot from uh, this 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when I see a author, like, coincidentally, when I'm out next time, I will 100% go and buy 4D because that means I'm very, very lucky. <laughs> yeah, you can count how many authors you see and see what, <laughs> what number is there. <laughs> yeah. But I won't encourage you to gamble so you won't. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. No, yeah. of course not. Okay. okay. Thanks, guys, for joining us um, for lunch. I hope you guys, like, enjoyed uh, listening to the conversation while you ate or, mm -hmm. I mean, I hope you guys have eaten lunch already. We're doing another live show tonight at 9pm with Mark Lee. So do join us again. Uh, it's the same page. I mean, Mothership oh, and Sheila. Yeah. Please just oh. come back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we'll be speaking to Mark Lee tonight and we'll see you then. Bye. 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 Thanks for joining us today. Reality is so disappointed. My disappointment is immeasurable. My month is ruined. Hey. Say no more. What? Boy, let me tell you what I think. I know reality is different when you got four walls caving. Yeah. But don't you worry, cause someone tell you what you can.